last round's coming up. You're way behind. Graham's down there, you understand? You're making me look bad. I've seen better fights at the hockey games. What am I wasting my time here for? You're here so I can watch you. That way you'll stay in condition. Get us a drink. Root beer. Sure, Harry. Hello, Mr. Bernstein. Hello, Strikes. Remember, plenty of bounce. Weave. Gas up. Where were you the first three rounds? Looking for my head. I guess we struck out. Cram's leaving. Better look next time. You're a ring of guns, Cisco. Harry, when I saw you leaving, it's I thought. It's a long way over here. It's a long way back. The gas fumes in the tunnel make me sick. Like you and this tramp of yours do. Hey, I don't like being called a tramp. I thought he'd make a better showing. He was nervous because you were here. You'll be better next time, Harry. The name is Cram. Do yourself and me a favor. Forget it. Hey, where do you get off shoving people around? Your timing's off, boy. You're gonna need a lot of experience. Come on. How are you, Dave? I thought you quit the business. It quit me. Look, Mr. Cram, I'm sorry to cause you all this trouble, but just give me a minute of your time. There's all sorts of ways I can fit into your setup. I got a little deal right, right in my own neighborhood. You keep taking punches like tonight, and you won't have enough sense left to untie your shoes. What's it to you? Nothing. I'm against suicide, that's all. Hasn't anybody ever told you that you'll never get very far in the fight game bucking Harry Cram? You have to take that kind of gaff to get anywhere. You can have it. Well, why'd you take this bout? Improve my social status. Mm, broke, huh? That's what makes fighters. Good fighters. What they haven't got gets them started, and what they're afraid of going back to keeps them in the ring. It ain't for fun. <laughs> you can say that again. Who taught you to fight? Ray Casimir. He was a fighter himself. I know. Had a perfect record. Lost every fight. Well, what happened tonight wasn't raised for. He was just mistaken about one thing, thinking I could be a fighter. Well, you could be. You could take a punch and your game. And I got a feeling you could hit if you was learned right. I just learned from Parker. Yeah. <laughs> You did a little better in that last round. How come? I don't know. Guess I felt bad about the way I looked in there. Like a bum. Pride's a good thing in a fighter. Yeah, I can see where it would help if you can fight, but after tonight, I think I'll just forget about it. I'll tell you something. I never try to talk nobody into it, but I got this much sickness left in me. When I see a boy who looks like he might have something, I tell him. But I don't ask him that he should stay with fighting. That's up to him. You know what that's for? That was made for picking up things, not for hitting people. But if you got to fight, do it the right way. See it that way. As 
is where you can find me. Doing, Tommy. I'm going back to no man's land, Benny. Huh? I just got laid off. Oh, it's too bad. Don't let it get you down. Things will get better. <laughs> yeah. I've been hearing that ever since I got out of the army. Work will come to you. You just got to be patient. That ain't easy on an empty stomach. Your old man made a good living in a tannery for a long time. Yeah. Long enough to work himself to death before he was 50. And for what? Even if you make a living, what's it for? So you can pay rent on a room and a lousy joint over there? Worm's eye view from the wrong side of the river. That ain't the way I want to live. Sure, Tommy. Say, does Dave Bernstein live here? Yes, you'll find him at the garage. Thanks. Anything I can do for you? I was looking for Dave Bernstein. He'll probably be back soon. I'll wait. Well, this is sure a fancy trap. Where'd Bernstein get the loot? <laughs> he doesn't own it. Just works here. Who does own it? A man named Mallinson. Oh. You work for him too, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you might say so. He must be a pretty nice guy to let you use all this equipment. Say, about all those places I saw on the way up here, like this one, where do they get it? Hmm? I mean, where do they heist the kind of money it takes? Some inherit it. Ever hear of the Mallinson ball bearings? Oh. So that's what did it. <laughs> Little round pieces of steel. Boy, she's got it, huh? She's pretty, isn't she? Man, I'd like to get close to that. Yeah, you get that impression. Where does she fit in the scenery? She's Mallinson's daughter. Fifty thousand miles. What? A friend of mine always says that when something's a long way off and you haven't got a prayer of getting close to it. Your friend is right. Must be great having it made like this from the day you're born. She doesn't think so. She wants to be a writer. Works very hard at it. Her father even got her a job in a newspaper. She's a bright girl, but she just can't seem to make it. You're breaking my heart. I know Dane went to work in a grocery store when she was 15. She's bright too, but if she loses her job, she can't worry about it in no swimming pool. Hello, Mr. Bernstein. Remember me? Tommy Shea. Sure, I remember you. I've been thinking about what you said, and I want to go on fighting, and I want you to handle me. Yeah, well, when I talked to you the other night, I guess I got a little carried away. I shouldn't have said it. I'm out of the business. But you, you told me to look you up. I know, but you better forget it. You'll be way ahead. Look, I came all the way. Sounds like good advice to me. 
Nobody asked you. Then watch it, son. You don't look like a fighter. Who are you to know if I look like a fighter or not? Watch what you're saying. Sorry, Mr. Mallinson. Mallinson? Oh. Having yourself some fun, huh? I just didn't want to embarrass you. Yeah, okay, kid. There's just been a mistake all around. Sorry. Well, don't be. I'm sorry I stepped on your grass. If you were a little younger, I'd take a poke at you. Wait a minute. Would it make you feel any better to take that punch at me? You know something? It would. Get the gloves, Dave. Well, are you kidding, Mr. Mallinson? Yeah, drop it, Pop. <laughs> you don't look like a fighter. Don't I? In college, I was intercollegiate boxing champ. I wanted to be a fighter. My coach talked me out of it. Said the first back alley tramp I fought had knocked me silly. I still think he was wrong. Get the gloves. Careful, Mr. Mallinson. This kid gets rough when his pride's hurt. Don't worry, I can handle him. Your coach was right. What brought this home? So long, Chick. Stick real close to your nice, soft nest. Shay, where are you going? I'm going to invent a better ball bearing. Put you out of business. Shay! Come here. You still want to be a fighter? Yeah. But I ain't gonna make you hanging around no fancy fairgrounds like this. You could be wrong. Mallinson wants me to train you. I'll bet he does. What's the gimmick this time? Why don't you stop yapping and listen? He wants you to stay here. He thinks you got possibilities. You can do odd jobs around the place when you ain't working with me. I don't get it. First I belled him one, and all of a sudden he comes up with the big brother act. What for? Well, that's his problem. Well, how about it? Well, okay. What have I got to lose? This might not be such bad a dress after all. Say, Miss Mallinson, I'm sorry about that little hassle upstairs. Don't be. Well, I ain't that sorry. You think you punched yourself into something pretty good, don't you? Look, I didn't come out here to... What score's in her? Come on, forget her. That may not be so easy. Now, look, before we start anything, you keep your nose clean around here. If you want me to make a fighter out of you, you're going to do it my way. Okay. You're running the show. Now, now fighting is the screw arm. Where's your hitting hand? Your left. All right, now we switch to orthodox, which is the way you're going to fight. Now, where's that hitting hand? Out front, closer to your opponents. Simple as that. But instead of laying back, waiting for an opening, you're using it all the time. Jab it. Hook it. Jab. Hook. Come on. Come on. That's it. All right. Left to the body. Left to the head. Cross with your right. There. All right. All right. Keep your eyes on me. All right. Fade with that left. Hook with it. Cross with your right. Again. Faster. Okay. Move around and cool off. That orthodox stance looks better on you every day. Feels like I was born with it. I don't get it, Dave. Spent three months switching me around, I ain't had a fight. When do we go? I feel like I'm ready. I could use a few bucks. You don't poke your nose out of here till I give the word. Too many kids are pushed too fast these days. That ain't gonna happen to you. Okay, get your shower, and then you... 
Better clean up them cars. Hiya, no future. Ray, <laughs> say, it's been a long time. Yeah, Graham's been keeping me pretty busy hopping around. How's it going with you? Fine. How come you found your way out here? I heard you was working as a flunky. Wondered how you liked it. <laughs> well, it's a start, anyway. It's still 50,000 miles. Look, I hate to see him mixed up with this Bernstein guy. You're wasting your time. Even I gave up when he was a fighter. He thinks I could be good. You've got to be better than good to get any place in the fight game. This is here for thinking. It ain't there to get knocked off. Now, I've been in Cram's ear talking about you, chum, night and day, buzzing him like a fly. He'll take you off. Doing what? Collecting from a few bookies like I've been doing. Later on, maybe he'll cut you into something big. No dice, Ray. I don't like Cram. You think I like him? He's got a personality like a lox. This world don't pay off unlike him. Now, here's the facts of life, Tommy. Cram will pay you a hundred a week. No. Better make it my own way. Oh, Tommy, Tommy, why can't you tune me in? Garage. Miss Mallison would like her car at the front entrance right away. Be right up. See you in a minute. I see you just washed it. Looks very nice. If I had one like it, I'd probably take it to bed with me. If you really care about such things, you'll probably get them. <laughs> Only way I'm going to get a jalopy like this is when they turn it in for junk. Material things aren't really that important. They are where I come from. Well, have fun. Keep it under 100. Yay! Who was that? The upstairs maid. Oh, sure, Mac. Now I know I haven't been getting any engraved invitations to come out here. How are you doing with it? Haven't you got your sights set a little too high? Or does she let you splash around in her swimming pool? Come on, give me the lowdown. Oh, knock it off. Oh, but that's how it is. The princess and the pauper. Ah, it isn't anyway. I said knock it off, Ray. OK. It's worth wet nursing a bunch of heaps. Go ahead. When you come to your senses again, you look me up. I got a real girl for you. Drinks like there's no tomorrow. Lives like a skyrocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. Well, see you around, huh? So long, no future. something you submitted to a magazine? Mm-hmm. Well, aren't you curious? <laughs> no. Obviously, they've sent it back. Self-pity. Deadliest enemy of success. Dad, please. I'm a little tired of platitudes. You know, Dorothy, I sometimes think the reason you haven't succeeded as a writer is because your standards and tastes aren't ordinary. They're like mine, very high. I just like something of mine accepted, that's all. I know. That's why I've tried to help you. Help me? You like things just as they are. But I've given you everything that you wanted. How could you know what I want? I'm just a, a possession like all the other things you own. A fixture on the Mallinson estate. All you care about is what, is what you want me to be. You've never tried to know me, know who I am. Beg pardon, sir. This Shea boy to see you. Come in. Yes, what do you want? I got some tickets for you. My fight tomorrow night. Going in my first main event against a pretty good boy. Thought you might like to go. Lakeside? Yeah, Jersey. Just across the George Washington Bridge a few miles. I'm afraid that's a bit too far. 
I'll come to see you when you fight in New York. If you're ever good enough to make it. I'll make it. I'm sorry. Don't be. It's not often I have a chance to get a lesson from somebody with real class. But he'll do the same thing to you again. I won't put myself in the same spot again. Then you're leaving? What is it with you? Ever since I first came here, you've been trying to give me the heave Always telling me to get out. Why is it so important to you? Never mind. Forget it. I will. The old man's given me the chance to do what I want to do. Besides, I like the view. It isn't often somebody like me gets close enough to even look. I've got a ringside seat next to the things money can buy. You think that's everything, money? It's number one with me. Maybe with enough of it, I can buy a girl like you. Pretty, stuck up. Someone without the fear of going hungry in her eyes. Yeah, that's what I want. I just ain't got the price on the tag. I tell you my boy was a comer? Was I right? Yeah, sometimes that gab of yours makes sense. I should have listened to you. Should have listened to myself. I'd still own him. Get out of here, old This good. If he opens that eye again, I'm going to stop the fight myself. Remember what I told you. Box him. Stay away from him. Watch that eye. Well, come on, boy. Watch that eye. Slumming. Hey, the word is out on you, Tommy. The word is good. Cram and me just saw the fight. That guy was no pushover. You look great. No, I haven't come along. Coming along? You arrived. That's why I've been waiting on your doorstep like an orphan. I want to be taken in. Why don't you go back to that pool room and slide down a cue stick? <laughs> Let's go over to the dock, take another look at that eye. Hey, Bernstein, wait a minute. I came down here to talk to you. Oh. Let's sit down and have a little meeting. What about? About him, my fighter. Your fighter? I'm still his manager, ain't I? I figure I ought to be cut in for at least 50%. <laughs> Don't pay no attention to him, Dave. Really can't rule out a guy for trying. You know, Tommy, it's just that I want to see him make it to the top. We'll make it. Where? I ain't been catching any of your fights on a coast-to-coast -coast hookup. You can't get nowhere scrounging around for nickels and dimes in the sticks like this. Without Cram, the New York crowd and TV, 
You might as well be fighting in a closet. True or false? I ain't doing business with Cram. You should. Look what he's done for Al Corelli. After he beats Steve Lynn, he'll get a crack at the title. Forget it, Ray. You know how I feel about Cram. Okay, so you do business with me. I'm in like a rivet with that New York bunch. I can get you any kind of deal you want to make. With Bernstein, you're still 50,000 miles away. With me, it's easy money. The kind of living that quiets the nerves. Don't try it the hard way. This I looked at, Dave. I better put her car away. You want to take this for me? Okay. You sleep late in the morning, huh? Yeah. You going out again? No. Are you, are you all right? Sure, I won. But your eye, it looks terrible. I had it changed. I didn't think you liked it the way it was before. May I ask you something? Sure, go ahead. Why do you fight? You're not asking me something. You're asking me everything. Besides, this ain't a night for a life story. You're right. It's none of my business. Hey, wait a minute. I had no right to talk to you like that. I'm sorry. I'm gonna let you in on a state secret. Tell you why I fight. I do it for money. They're brutal and senseless. It makes me sick to watch them. You and that other fighter pounding each other, and bleeding and hitting each other like animals. You saw me fight tonight? So your old man took you to the zoo to see the animals, as you call us, huh? I went by myself. Why? Come on, tell me why. I don't know. Then I'll tell you something. I like you, too. How do you like that coming from a tramp fighter? What are you crying about? I'm sorry. Don't be. Hey, you didn't make the world. I did. Stuck it together with spit and glue. That's better. Besides, you shouldn't waste your time worrying about guys like me. Why? Why? All you can say is why. Like a little girl. I don't know the words to tell you why. I guess I gotta show you. Come on. Beautiful, Tommy. You're looking the wrong way. Look over there. No matter where I am, every time I close my eyes, that's what I see. Picturesque, I think they call it. Except you won't ever see it in a travel log because they don't take pictures of that kind of life. And the smells. <laughs> They're special when the wind's right from the river. But it's more than what you smell and see. It's, it's what living there does to you. Makes you fight to just barely stay alive. All the time wondering if it's worth it. I wish I could write the way you talk. It's easy. All you have to do is be born in a dump, educated in an alley. I learn you. I know, I know. It's, it's teach. Do you know something? Speaking correctly, it doesn't go with me. It feels strange. Like I feel when I'm in your living room. The way I feel every time I look at you. It's like all the other things I'm, I'm not entitled to. I think you're entitled to anything you want. Whether I am or not, I'm never coming back to the nothingness here. 
Even if I have to beat everybody's brains in. I could crowd the whole world with my corner and belt it right on the chin. Tommy. Tommy. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Tommy, there's some things I want to tell you. About me, about my mother. She's in a sanitarium. She's an alcoholic. My father put her there. He destroyed her. The way he destroys everything that doesn't fit the Melanson mold. The way he's going to destroy you if you let him. Hey, take it easy. But Tommy, take me away with you. Away, anywhere. Dorothy. Dorothy, I can't. I can't support you. But Tommy, please. Look, I'm going to get dough. A lot of money. I'm going to try to get it fast. But you've got to give me a little time. Come in. Is Ray Casmeric here? Sure. Come on and find yourself some trouble. I didn't know he was having a party. Maybe I better come Relax. back. Relax. It's real friendly in here. Tommy! I'm Doris Randall. You got a last name, Tommy? Tommy, I'm sure glad to see you. Hey, maybe I better come back another time. I wanted to talk Are to you. Are you kidding? Why, well, you couldn't have picked a better time. I'm having a little bash in here. Come on, I want you to meet some of these buffaloes. You can start right here. I couldn't get any further than his first name. Look, I want to talk to you alone. I wish you'd said that to me. Oh, later, Doris. Go play in that traffic over there. Before you go, look for me. I'll be under one of the rugs. It's quite a place you've got here. Yeah, not a bad mousetrap, huh? I've been catching pretty good lately. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> What's your problem, chum? I need money, Ray. Sure. Door's open. How much? No, this ain't a touch. I've got to get into big money. I want to talk to you about getting some fights in New York. Now you are talking. You gonna dump Bernstein? No, I'm not. And I don't want any setups. Nothing phony. I won't play in the dirt. Okay. Why not? We'll play it straight. Your worries are over, no future. You just let me handle your case from now on in. I'll come up with a match for you. It'll be like old times, Tommy. You and me together again, the way we'd always planned. Gentlemen. Glad you dropped in, Ray. You able to spare the time? For you, Harry, always. Don't make jokes, Casmeric. I had a big breakfast. It isn't settled yet. I hear you've been making a few connections on your own, playing it a little uh, sneaky. Maybe you forgot. You're supposed to be working for me. I've just been building up a few contacts, Harry. Those contacts have been putting money in your pocket, not mine. You've been hearing wrong. Look, I got a good deal for you. Lock the safe, boys. You've been looking for a tune-up fight for Al here. I got a good boy, Tommy Shea. You saw him fight in Jersey, remember? And we can get him cheap, under five grand. He ain't nothing. You're wrong, Al. He's developed into real class. Harry, he's just what you need. TV crowd's crying for new faces. Tommy's got color. He's loaded with personality. Why don't you talk to the theater guild? No, wait a minute, Al. That kid wasn't bad. Is he willing to play along? Why, sure, Harry. Would I come to you with a guy who didn't want to go along? He belongs to Bernstein, doesn't he? Look, he's fed up with Bernstein. He needs the dough. He came to me. It's got to be a nice, easy win for Al. Why all the steam over a clown like that? Because I can't risk getting you cut up before the title fight. Now look, if I give you this go, I don't want any of your fast shuffles. Why, of course not, Harry. This kid will do anything I tell him to. Hey, break it up! 
Right time. Lightning just struck. Will you hear? You'll be picking your eyes up off the floor. I got your match. Since when have you had anything to say about our fights? Didn't you tell him? Tell me what? Dave, I went to see Ray because I've got to have some bigger bouts. I'm getting off this train right now. What am I? Some sort of snake bite? I got a great fight for you. Al Corelli. What do you think of that? I think that's great. Corelli? Yeah. He's looking for a tune-up go before he fights Lynn for the title. Wait a minute. Corelli's rough. Tommy can't beat him. Who says he's going to beat him? What? Not right now, anyway, Tommy. Cram don't think so, either. But there's five grand begging to be introduced to you. For doing what? Going in the tank, huh? Now, hold on, Dave. You know I wouldn't go for a deal like that. This fight's on the level. I told Ray that even before he went to see Cram. I need you with me, Dave. Why, sure he does. If Tommy makes a good showing, we're on our way. We'll have every sports writer in the country raving him up. I want this bout, Dave. I need the money. I need it bad. Well, I should have better sense. Maybe a weapon will learn you a few things. Don't forget that Corelli's cute. In close, he's dirty. He'll butt, hit low, anything he can get away with. Okay, Dave. I wonder where Ray is. Well, you just worry about Corelli. You let him lead to you. Keep that left hook working. Look, Cram, we're kind of busy in here. Relax, I just dropped in to wish you luck. You got nothing to worry about, kid. Nobody's gonna get hurt. Al's gonna let you make a good showing tonight. He's gonna let me. He's talking about a fix. I can smell it from here to Canarsie. Wait a minute. You mean Kazmarek didn't tell you? I don't throw fights for nobody, Cram. You better go along with us, kid. You go tell Corelli this ain't gonna be no waltz. Beat it. Okay? Even if you live through it, you'll never get another fight in this town. We'll talk about that after the fight, Cram. I got a boy this time that's straight all the way. You're not gonna muzzle in on him like you did on this money-hungry ape. Now get out! Was Stretch one of your boys? Yeah. I built him into a champion. Then Cram got his hands on him, took him away from me, and he wound up dripping with scum. I've been waiting a long time to square things with Cram. Maybe I can help. I think I can take Corelli for you, Dave. I think you can too now, Tommy. If he was expecting a fix, he probably won't be in top shape to go ten. So he'll probably try to put you away in a hurry. So you just stay out of trouble for the first few rounds, work on him downstairs, soften him up. You know the rules, boys. You got your instructions from the commission this afternoon. I want a good, clean fight. Shake hands now, come out fighting. I didn't know you were interested in boxing. Oh, it's Shay. Don't be a headhunter. Bang away at that body. Uh -huh. Punches with him. Not yet. Okay. Go get him, Al. Well, we're moving.
moving into the fourth round, Corelli has been doing most of the scoring, forcing the fight so far. Shea has given us only occasional flurries, and most of his attack has been to the body. How about it, Dave? Can I make the move now? No. Keep working on that belly. I'll tell you when I'm ready. If he keeps on clobbering me, I may not be around when you're ready. Pretty son of boy. Shut up. You better lie down and go to sleep. stand and punch with him, not till I tell you. Well, he keeps shooting off his face. I don't like it. Don't play a sucker. You lose your head, he'll chop you to bits. Coming. You better get him in a hurry. I'm willing. Go tell him. He's ready. Go out and get him.
You got any poison? And if you joined us a bit late tonight, just to bring you up to date, Tommy Shea was knocked to the canvas in the fourth round, and Al Corelli was knocked down in round number eight. Corelli was the aggressor most of the way, but Tommy Shea landed the better body blows. Now let's get up to the ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon, and get the official decision. All right, Jim, take it. Your attention, please. Judge Artie Ross scores at five rounds for Corelli, four rounds for Shea, one round even. <laughs> Judge Mike Shore sees it five rounds for Shea, three rounds for Corelli, and two rounds even. <laughs> Referee Mel Leonard scores it five, four, and one even in favor of the winner by majority vote, Tommy Shea. <laughs> Well, looks like I picked another winner. Tommy! What happened to you? He's got a nerve showing even a face like that around here. Come on, what did happen to you? Uh, Cram's boys worked me over. But don't worry about that, I'm okay. Tommy, I tell you we're in. You made a great showing. We're on our way, chum. Well, I don't like your way, Casmeric. Yeah, Ray, why didn't you tell us? You knew I wouldn't go for Cram's setup. That's right. I figured if nobody knew, you had a chance to beat Corelli, which you did. I set it up for you. Yeah, Cram had it figured right. You were giving him the whammy. <laughs> Look who's worried about Cram. And the looks of you, you ought to be. No, that's not what's worrying me. I'm just wondering when you're going to sell us down the river. Tommy? I'd never. We've been chums too long. Be like stealing from myself. You'd do that, too, if you could figure an angle. All right, all right. Quit hollering on me. Come in. Great fight, Shay. Did it go the way you planned it, or you think it was a fluke? Why, of course it was planned. And we'll hand Corelli the same thing anytime he steps into the ring with us. Looks like you got into the ring with him. Yeah, who'd you fight tonight? I had a slight accident on the way to the fight. Yeah, we all had an accident the day he was born. <laughs> Never mind about me. Listen, there's a great story in this boy. A real Cinderella angle. He's been fighting to better himself ever since he was a kid in Jersey. Six months ago, he comes back from the Army in Korea. Goes back to the fight racket. Fighting clean, but not getting any of the breaks. Then he's discovered in the ring by a millionaire named Mallison. Robert T. Mallison. Mallison's ball bearings, that one? That's the one. He takes Tommy here, right up to his Long Island estate. Tommy's been training there ever since, in secret. Not a bad yarn, if it's true. Check it. This is a real rags to riches bit, from out of nowhere. Bang, he knocks over the top contender in his class. Now, he's ready for the champion. 
All right, boys, that's all. We got work to do here. Hey, write it up good, huh, fellas? <laughs> no, okay. Lots of color, you know. Hi. Good morning. Morning. It's almost noon. After the fight last night, I'm surprised you can even move. I did forget to duck a couple of times, didn't I? Oh, Tommy, I'm awfully glad you won. Oh, say. I just happen to have a couple of theater tickets to a musical. Here it's very good, too. Well, I mean, uh, I'm not going to be able to use them. I thought you might like to go. <laughs> well, thanks. I've been wanting to see this. Who are you planning on taking? Well, maybe I'll take a polo player. Perhaps a fighter I have in mind. You take the fighter. You look better with the down-to-earth types. Kind of sets you off. <laughs> Oh, hello, Tommy. Dorothy will be right down. I've uh, just been reading about you and myself. Wealthy Long Islander develops fistic protege. I'm sorry about that, sir. You see, this friend of mine told him all that stuff, and if I'd known he was going quiet. Quite all right. In fact, I contributed a few of these lurid details. I was ambushed by reporters when I went to luncheon at the club today. I can sure ask a lot of questions. I saw the Corelli fight last night. You looked very good. Thank you, sir. Sports writers are saying you've got the makings of a champion. Well, Dave's done most of it. No, I don't think so. You know, Tommy, my attitude towards you up until now must have seemed strange at times, like my refusing to see your early fights. Unforgivable. If I hadn't had a reason. But you see, if I'd been patronizing towards you, I might have robbed you of your incentive. This way, stinging you on occasion was healthy. What you've accomplished, you've done on your own. You should be quite proud of that. I hope you're going to stay on here. Oh, thank you, sir. So far, it's worked out fine. Good. Sit down, Tommy. I'd like to talk to you about Dorothy. She's in love with you, you know. Well, you needn't look so surprised. I've noticed things, seeing you two together. Are you in love with her? Yes, I am. I suppose you've thought about asking her to marry you. I can't afford to right now. Well, that's realistic. Dorothy's very naive about money. She thinks she can live without the things that I've tried to give her. But there are other problems. You two are from completely different worlds. Not that that's insurmountable. No, people change and grow intellectually, and I'd like to help you. That is, if you don't mind. Mind? Why should I? Good evening. Oh, ready? Oh, you look beautiful tonight, dear. New dress? Pretty, isn't it? Sure is. Well, shall we go? Good night, sir. Good night. What are you doing way out there in left field? Come over here. That's better. Got a message for you. There, yeah, delivered. What were you and my father talking about? I got another message. The old man's in our corner. I don't want him there. Look, what do you say you let me do the worrying, huh? You're playing right into his hands. He doesn't want us to stay together. That's not what he said. He thinks I'm right for you. So do I. You are now. You're strong and you believe in yourself. That's one of the things I like most about you. You're able to fight for what you want. Tommy, my father isn't what he seems to be. He doesn't give, he takes. He'll try to run your life, fit you into his pattern, polish off the rough edges. And when he's through, there'll be nothing inside, nothing left to fight with or for. I want you just as you are now. I'm not going to change. Oh, Tommy, listen. Look, I'll keep an eye on him in the clutches. Okay? Man, some cubbyhole, huh, Dave? Of course, I'm used to a lot better. Yeah. Hey, 
Hey, the floor doesn't creak. Boy, Mousen certainly rolled out the carpet. No place for a hungry fighter who wants to keep on winning. Don't worry, I'm still hungry. What dough? You never get nothing for nothing, Tom. Huh? Like Corelli all the way. Sure looks good. You could take him again, Tommy. I bet my last dollar. Oh, you should have been in there tonight instead of Corelli. The sports writers think you're entitled to a shot at the championship. They've been playing you up big. Sports writers don't sign contracts. Yeah. You haven't got Cram and Corelli's name on a piece of paper. They ain't no match. Well, why don't you talk to Cram, Dave? Isn't there some kind of deal you could make? Huh. I had my belly full of his kind of deals. Well, uh, what sort of plans do you have for Tommy? Well, like I told him, I think we should go on the road, take fights all over the country. Tommy builds up a big enough following, Cram will be forced to give him a crack at the title. Why don't you go on the road, Tommy? Well, what Dave's talking about will take two or three years. There's no money in it. Real dough's right here in New York, in the big arenas, the television. The other way, you start. I see. Look, Dave, the fight game is a business, just like any other business. There's no room for idealism. Now, you take my business. If a competitor becomes a real threat to what I have or what I want, I amalgamate with him. That way, playing it smart, nobody loses. I ain't that kind of smart. I don't want to be. There's no need for that attitude, Dave. We both have Tommy's best interest at heart. But three years is a long time. A great deal could happen. Why did Tommy move into the house, Dan? Obviously, I asked him to. He doesn't belong here. <laughs> I sometimes think, Dorothy, that you're the snob in this family. Tommy and I have been getting along just fine. So I've seen. If you're in love with him, Dorothy, you ought to realize that unless he grows intellectually, unless his interests correspond with yours, it wouldn't last. Together, we can make something out of him. Like you've made something of me? Dependent, insecure, never quite measuring up. Make him willing to compromise for the way of life you've shown him. What money can buy. Well, I won't stay here and watch it. This time, I'm getting out for good. Dorothy. Dorothy. Tommy, wait a minute. What's the matter? What happened? She's leaving. Leaving? Where's she going? Now, don't worry about it. She'll be back. Wait. If you go after her now, you'll only make matters worse. Dorothy's disturbed about you moving into the house. Why? She feels I'm interfering in your life. Tommy, the important thing for you is to get financial independence as soon as possible. I could give you money, but... I don't want it that way. Of course you don't. Well, the answer, it seems to me, is to get into the big money and soon. Once you get it, your future's guaranteed. Then you'll have time to go after that championship. Yeah, but how? It seems to me that all the business being done in this town is being done with cram. Dave won't hold still for that. It's your life, Tommy, and Dorothy's. I've got to have a shot at the title. I need it now. I can't even get my foot in Cram's office. You could if we played along. You better give me that again. I'm not sure I heard it. Oh, who am I to change the world? I need a stake, a big one. Tell Cram I'll give Corelli a chance to wipe out that decision I won. Find out how much he'll pay for a sure win for his boy. You'd go in the tank? I said find out how much it'll be worth. Quite a fistful. Beat him once, so you could be the favorite. 
Now, if we bid on Corelli and you lose, we could stand to make a pile. I want you to see Graham. Find out just how much he will pay. If he'll go along, I will. I want you to take every dime he pays me and put it on Corelli. Tommy. Come in, Tommy. Come in. I'd like you to meet Mrs. Mallinson. This is Tommy Shea. How do you do? How do you do? You're the prize fighter. Dorothy has told me about you. She said Dear, that... Dear, why don't you go up and rest for a while? Well, I'd like to talk Some to... Some other time, dear. Well... Well, all right. I'd better take my purse with me. Have you seen it? On the couch where you left it, dear. Oh, oh dear, I'm so clumsy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, it's been nice meeting you, Mr. Shea. Thank you, Mrs. Mallinson. Mrs. Mallinson will be with us from now on, Tommy. Oh, that's fine. I brought her home from the sanitarium this morning. We must be careful with her. She's not completely well yet. I'd like to tell you something about her, Tommy. I think you'd be interested. She came from a background something like yours. When I first met her, she was working in a department store. I was fascinated by her. There was a great potential there. I saw that with help, she could become gracious, charming lady. But I didn't see the contradictions in her personality. You see, Tommy, I tried to do for her what I've done for you. But she couldn't get over her background. She didn't have your strength. There were weaknesses there. She always felt inferior. But it's not the time to talk about that now. You look in great shape, Tommy. Everything going all right? Yeah, fine, I guess. Good. Try to explain this to you. You don't have to. I read print pretty good now. There it is, black and white. And between the lines, yellow. We've come a long way together. Yeah. To nowhere. I still want you with me, Dave. I checked out when you mugged me, using cram as a club. I ain't got time to even look at you anymore. Father said you'd come back. I'm glad you did. I came back because of my mother. Listen, Dorothy. After the fight, I'm going to have a big chunk of money. Enough to take care of both of us. You won't have to live here anymore if that's what you want. Good luck, Tommy. I hope you win, if that's what you want. Didn't you hear me? I'm going to have the money. It doesn't matter whether I win or not. It's on the line. I know. I think you've made what they call a fix. Have you, Tommy? I'm going to have the money. That's all that matters. We're entitled to have it. You said so yourself. Not this way. Anyway, now it's what's important. Wouldn't you want us to get married in the next world? 
Whatever I'm doing, it's for you. Don't you see that? I want us to start out right, with enough for both of us. There'll never be enough. That's the way my father wants it. You're like a child with his nose against the window, blinded by the dazzle of things he's never had. What you don't see is that the only thing that can belong to you is yourself or someone you love. And you don't belong to yourself anymore, Tommy, or to me. You belong to him or to whoever buys you, whoever has the price on the tag, the way you once thought about me. It's funny. The thing I've had all my life, money, it's always been in the way of anything I really want. I'm ready, dear. Oh, hello, Mr. Shea. I'll be there in a minute, Mother. Goodbye, Tommy. Goodbye. Yes. He thought that bringing my mother here would get me back. But we're both leaving. I'll be able to now, Tommy. Watching what he's done to you has given me the strength I needed. Tommy, you're up late for I've been night. waiting for you. Dorothy was here this afternoon. Oh. Well, that's fine. I told you she'd come back. And after this fight, Tommy, you're going to have quite a large sum of money. You'll be able to give her everything she wants, just as you planned. You mean just as you planned? Yes, I, I suppose you're right. But anything else you and Dorothy need from now on, I'm with you 100%. You haven't got enough, Mallinson. Look, I made a fix, just like you wanted me to. I don't blame anybody but myself. Dorothy was right. I had my nose against the window. Tommy Shea, one of the hundred neediest cases, taking a handout from you so you could run my life. Tell me what to think, how to feel. The only thing you ever had I really wanted, I lost because I listened to you. That's your kind of a fix, Mallinson. It's harder to figure out than the kind Cram makes, but it smells just as bad. No matter what happens to me from now on, you're not going to be any part of it. I'm checking out of this fancy graveyard. Hello, Harry. I... Uh, what's so important? You got to talk about it at 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm not throwing the fight. I don't like your sense of humor, Shay. It does nothing for me. What have you and this weasel cooked up? They had nothing to do with it. I've been trying to talk him into seeing things our way, Harry. You better listen to him. It's going to be on the level, and that's it. You stinking no good. Hold it, Stretch. This isn't the first pig hit I've ever looked at. He won't wise up. So you want to fight Corelli Square, huh? Okay. We'll play it your way. But you won't like it. Sorry, Ray. Chump. Yeah. I guess that's the word for it. Well, this washes us up, Ray. Hanging on with me now, the only direction you can go is down. True or false? True. Hey, no future. I got a lot of dough riding on you to lose the Corelli fight. I'm sort of a chump myself. I hope I don't collect it. I'm sticking with you. You want to go down the lobby? No. How about playing some gin? No, thanks, Ray. You're thinking about Dave, huh? Yeah. You ought to have him with you, Tommy. He won't come back. Try to get a little sleep. Good idea. I'm going to 
to take a little walk. Kind of jittery. You get that rest, huh? straight. He's gonna try to beat Corelli. Isn't that what you want? I'll believe it when I hear it from Tommy. Tommy? He must still be sleeping. Tommy! You gotta let me call it off, Tommy. I'll be all right. You can't go up against Corelli like this. One more beaten now and you'll wind up on Dream Street. It's no use, Dave. I'm gonna fight him. Be good to yourself, Tommy. Listen to me. Money ain't gonna do you no good if you're walking around punchy. Nothing in your head but birdseed. I have to prove something. Prove there's some things I won't do for money. I gotta beat him, Dave. I'm tired, dear. I think I'll go to bed. All right, Mother. Good night. I hope he wins. Introducing in this corner, wearing white trunks with a black stripe, weighing in at 146 and three quarter pounds from Jersey City, New Jersey, that sensational young challenger, Tommy Shea. And now, presenting on my left, wearing black trunks with a white stripe, weighing in at 145 pounds, that popular welterweight boxing champion of the world, Al Corelli. As you know the rules, you got your instructions and the permission this afternoon. Your eight count is waved out in this championship fight. Good luck to both of you boys. Shake hands, now come out fighting. Word is to keep working on his ribs. I'll push him clear through his back. Keep him away from those ribs. Fend him with your left and move. Chin tucked in. 
Keep moving to his left. Dave, you can't, you can't do that. I'll get him. All right, then, but listen to this. You got one chance, and it's a long shot. Switch back to your old style, southpaw. First time you throw a right, keep it out there. Try to take him by surprise. If you don't finish him off in this round, I'm going to stop the fight. You got him now. Finish him off. Uh-uh, not yet. I've got some kicks coming to me. I'm going to carve him up like a turkey. <laughs> face of yours pretty good. No more, huh? No more. It don't matter, Tommy. You made it. You're a champion by me. You always will be. The only real one I ever had. Tommy. What are you doing here? Dorothy, I've been coming here since I was a kid. I finally figured out what's been wrong with this view. No matter what you've got or haven't got, it doesn't mean anything if you're always looking at it by yourself. <laughs> 